It is 90.7 WCLH, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and Hazleton, and streaming worldwide at WCLH.org. That is Harpo with Foolish Pride off of their release, Too Much Is Just Enough. And on the phone with me right now, guitarist of Harpo, Chris Silvani. Chris, how you doing? All right, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Always good on a Metal Monday. Uh, so we're in the midst of playing Too Much Is Just Enough it's in its entirety, so it's great to have you on the air. And That's you guys... Awesome. glad to hear that. Yeah, definitely. And you guys are in the midst of touring, so uh, obviously a good time. Uh, coming to Wilkes-Barre, Harpo is on November 4th, this Saturday. But first, I'd like to ask how the tour is going. I know just this weekend you played in Northumberland, so how was that show? And was that kind of the only ones you've done or have there been more recently no there's that that's really been it we've got a couple shows um uh, the show was absolutely killer totally kick ass um yeah. uh great crowd the the band was on fire definitely and yeah. i i could definitely Go. picture that i was at the show here in mooksbury last november and definitely a killer crowd uh you know Big as big as any that I've seen at the Kirby Center. Yes, and that was a killer show too. Absolutely, and yeah, and this 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 show coming up at the Woodlands again. The band is has never been better. It's yeah. going to be an awesome show. Nice. And let's just get right into the album of the night. Too much is just enough. So there's a lot of great information up on your Facebook page about the history of Harpo. But this one, I'm kind of wondering, to, uh, get, hoping to get a little bit more detail about Too Much Is Just Enough. Uh, from what I read, it was recorded pretty much when you first entered the band, correct? Correct. And That was, uh, no, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I just, you could expand on that, like just coming into the band and writing this record or some of the songs as we'll dive into. Yes, there was there was some changes going on at the time when when I joined the band as well as the drummer, Richard Smith. Um, the band had just gone through, like I said, the changes. Uh, as you know, probably Lloyd had gone through that uh, that severe accident. Yeah. And they had brought a singer in from Sweden, and they had put out an, an EP, and and things were going well for the band, but it just things weren't transpiring like they wanted them to so uh there were some changes in the ranks and, and richard and i came in and uh they wanted to do do this this uh cd they wanted to bring back some of the old stuff and plus some of the songs that were were written so it's kind of a mix of uh of, of new material at the time plus the some of the stuff that they brought back um Without the list in front of me, of course, imagine that. But yeah, there there was a mix of of new and old at the time. Yeah, and when you say new and old, now uh, it said that it was brought back as like a compilation album with some of the material from Harpo's first three records. Now were these just brought and you use those files and those songs already written and recorded, or did you re-record any aspects of the older songs? Um, they were brought back. Um, some of them, there was, a, I believe, there was a couple at the time that we brought back. Um, the again, without the list in front of me, that's horrible. No. <laughs> the songs. Um, yeah, there, there was definitely some that were brought back and and, and brought back to life and put on the CD, uh, you know, remastered, and it was definitely sounding great overall all the way around with everything with the new material and the old material but all came together great yeah and looking at the set list that that i just came across on the internet it seemed as if the first five tracks might have been the the never recorded ones of course the title track too much is just enough red rum igniter unless they were on the ep but um are those more, uh, more or less, the songs that you and Rich, as new members, had more, uh, were more involved with writing the new, never recorded songs? They were, they were, they were already written. Okay. We were involved with 
maybe some tweaking and and you know bringing our own our own piece of it into it for sure yeah and now uh speaking of tweaking like since you did that i've heard of a lot of albums where you guys just come in and kind of do do their own thing and add to the album but of course don't write the actual songs but of course a guitarist puts his own creative input into a song whether it just be writing a solo so you chris as a guitarist who are some of your influences and how would you describe your guitar work um my of course my growing up my influences started with with eddie of course i i should say early on it was aerosmith and then after i heard eddie van halen of course that's when he, he changed everything for for everybody for all the guitar players out there, you know, that in that age when we were young like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that that followed by guys like George Lynch and, and a guy I favor today, incredibly, Joe Satriani. Um, you know, and, and as far as <clears throat> elements of my playing coming through on, on some of those songs, of course, um, you know, the, the whole technique that Eddie had with the, the tapping and all that stuff and, all, all that stuff absolutely played into into my solos and my input into the songs. Yeah, and definitely I could hear those influences specifically with the tapping. And some of the influences you mentioned are mine as well, so I could definitely relate. Once again, if you're just tuning in on 90.7 WCLH, it is AOM with Harpo's release. Too much is just enough. And on the phone with me now, Harpo's guitarist. Chris Silvani. Uh, so, Chris, about the show once again, November 4th at the Woodlands. You will also be um, playing with ACDC Tribute Halfway to Hell. Have you played with those guys before, and how, how is that dynamic? Um, we've never played with them. For us, the singers gotten up and, and sang some ACDC stuff with us. Killer, absolutely killer can't say say enough about the guy uh and and he's a great guy on top of that um but i can tell you that this combination between them and harpo it's going to be an absolute killer night it's going to be a fantastic kick-ass rock show i i definitely agree with that and i look forward to it and of course they are an acdc cover band but you and and harpo also do some covers as well i know you've done some ACDC well when I saw you um, I think a classic uh, Harpo cover that you guys do is Except Falls to the Wall which is another great one but when I went to the Kirby to see you guys last year I was very happy to hear you guys cover an XYZ tune uh, because it seems like from my perspective which isn't really a good one because I'm 22 years old it seemed like XYZ was kind of overlooked back in the day would you agree oh absolutely absolutely cool. there there's a lot of bands from back in that time that were were overlooked yeah. you know the the, the genere got swamped with bands and and it happens you know it, it yeah absolutely xyz killer yeah and, and then of course a, a boss to the wall is kind of an ep- epic like everyone knows it. it's an anthem and then you did face down in the gutter by xyz so just going on that how do you guys typically choose a song to cover do you guys all have to enjoy the song and i'm supposing that you guys all do since they're all really great songs do you think like do we have to put our harpo kind of spin on this Uh, how do you go about the process of rehearsing a cover song to perform well yeah our the Harpo spin definitely gets put on a lot of the, of the cover stuff. Um, and it, it, it's typical where someone will bring it to the band. One of us will bring it to the band and, uh, yeah, we all have to love it, which we usually all agree on it. Uh, you know, we all have kind of the same taste, so it, it's usually not a problem. Yep, definitely. And, Definitely from what I saw last year, a great rendition of all those songs that you did, and also then the Harpo originals mixed in there as well. So you guys definitely huge around the NEPA region, and as I read 
Canada. I also saw, Chris, that you will be playing a show in L.A. come December. So that kind of makes me wonder, has Harpo ever played around the L.A. scene, considering it, it seems as if the L.A. scene would be even bigger than here in NEPA. How does that kind of differ? Well, I, the unfortunate thing is, is I'm not going to be doing that show. I've, I've got commitments that are keeping me from going out there to do that. Um, um, but uh, they never got Harpo before me, before my time, never got to the L.A. scene. And again, you're talking about a swamp scene. Uh, I, you, the whole thing is with L.A., you, you don't have to be an L.A. band to get signed. And at that time, you didn't have to be an L.A. band to get signed. <clears throat> so they were, <clears throat> excuse me, they were working that, that line and almost got signed without that. So, yeah, L.A. is, LA is its own beast because I was out there myself for a little bit. It's, it's definitely dog-eat-dog out there. And, and kind of going on what you said about, you know, not getting signed in, in the L.A. scene, were, were, was Harpo ever, like, there back in the heyday? And I kind of, like, would like to compare it to, say, a Y&T who never really got what they deserved. And it always seemed like it's because they were established pretty much, I think, the same year as Harpo, 1974, like, maybe a a bit too early for when the scene unfolded how, as big as it did. Do you have any thought on that? Yeah, um, it, it was truly a band that, that should have been signed. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. And, uh, you know, the I, I guess Harpo was kind of one of those bands that that underground, when I say underground, you know, every, everybody knew who the band was and everybody loved the band. It, it's just unfortunate that that getting signed never happened for the band. So, yeah, and I think as far as timing, things things kind of hit funky when things started happening for them. It, it, you know, and again, I'm talking before my time in the band. Yeah. Um, the, the timing just wasn't right. And then when, when I got in the band and we, we were writing stuff and showcased in New York City, well, guess what? The grunge was happening. All the, you know, there was other crap going on too that it just took away from anything ever happening for the band. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you though, the the scene as what I saw my first Harpo and only one I've been to, the scene is definitely still happening, happening in the Wilkes-Barre area. So I look forward to the show on November 4th, this Saturday. Um, so... The next song I have on here that's scheduled is track number five, because we're playing the whole album, Too Much Is Just Enough, is Nightmare. Do you have any insight on at all on that song before we get to that one? Uh, just that it's it's absolutely a kick-ass song. Another great Harpo tune. No fans or butts. Cool. Absolutely so, killer. Definitely. All of them, and that's why I chose to to play this and thank you Chris for joining the show um, you can follow Harpo on Facebook just search up Harpo and Chris is there anything else you would like to say to the people of Wilkes-Barre who are probably coming out to the show or, or just listening to Metal Mondays here on WCLH before I let you go any any words well I would just love to say hey to Wilkes-Barre and all the fans that have supported us through the years been phenomenal uh one of the best areas ever for us to play in the the loyalty there is just unbelievable i mean we have that everywhere but wilkes Bear, unbelievable and uh i hope to uh hope you all come out to the show it's going to be absolutely killer and kick-ass like i said the band has never been more on fire uh everybody's really really killing it uh again absolute tight show last weekend this coming weekend, I can't imagine it being anything but. So, I hope you're there. Well, Chris, I'll definitely be there, and I'm sure I'll, I'll, a lot of people will be there out representing Wilkes-Barre. So, once again, thank you for calling, and we'll get to the next track on Too Much Is Just Enough. It is Nightmare right here on 90.7 WCLH. Keep it locked with Harpo.